Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the head writer and co-creator, David X. Cohen. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us and thanks for supporting the show because as you may have heard, we are coming back. So thank you very much. I think you've already been treated to uh, performances by several of our cast members, and unlike them, I only do one weird alien voice, and that's my actual voice. So you'll have to just live with just that one weird voice for the next hour or so. We just showed you one thing. In a few minutes, I'm going to show you another thing. I have with me the world premiere footage of the first three minutes of the first episode that we're going to do when we come back. So. The timing of this event is somewhat miraculous because that footage was handed to me on Thursday, two days ago. I did not think I w anything was going to be ready for today, so this is a total miracle that it's worked out. So before we get to that, I'm just going to give you a, a tiny bit of the history of how we got here today, and it involves this green shirt that I'm wearing right now. This is the Futurama shirt. This is some real inside material, so inside that it makes virtually no sense at all, so bear with me. In the early days of Futurama, we discovered that uh, two of the writers had this same shirt. So we, we began calling it the Futurama shirt, and we instituted a policy that on the third Thursday of every month, we would wear this shirt, or a green shirt if you didn't have this one, for good luck. All the writers would wear a green shirt every Thursday. And it kind of worked for a little while. We were always on the verge of cancellation, but we hung on for four years on Fox. And then uh, it seemed like it was working, and... Uh, just when I thought the shirt had unlimited powers, it came a time around the end of the fourth season when our fate was really uh, up in the air and we thought we might get canceled. So even though it wasn't a Thursday, I called an emergency green shirt day. We all wore green shirts and that was the day the show got canceled. So the shirt's powers are, are definitely somewhat limited. But the shirt is back on the, on the mend and it's returning to its powers because over the last couple years we put out four DVD movies, which some of you may have seen, and that has led to our return now. That in turn led to an order for 26 new episodes for Comedy Central. And uh, those are going to begin next, we believe next June, it's a little up in the air, but they'll probably show 13 starting next summer and then another season of 13 in 2011. So they're really going to stretch it out with a hamburger helper style uh, stretching of the material. <laughs> you probably get two seasons, two mini seasons of Futurama out of this. So now to introduce the clip we're about to see, let me just tell you that at the end of the last DVD we left ourselves in some hot water because we had our, our crew literally fleeing the universe at the end of the DVD. They were outlaws on the run from Zap Brannigan. Uh, Kiff Croker was on board with them. They ran into a wormhole, apparently never to return to our world. Um, of course, in Futurama, you can always find some excuse, some apparatus which will bring you back. So we knew deep in our hearts that if we came back, we would find a way to do so. And that's what you're going to see here. Now, this footage is called animatic or storybook animated footage. It's just pencil work. So this is the earliest pencil work done by the anima animators. It's basically a black and white comic book of the show, just showing kind of the key frames of the characters. So it's not going to be any glorious full color or 3D or anything, although you will see a few little snippets of 3D here and there that they that are similar stuff they've already done that they worked in, so suddenly it may cut to a full color 3D ship. But, but basically this is the very earliest stages with temporary sound effects, temporary music, so this is the real rough cut and uh, real, real insider material never before seen. So here it is, the first three minutes, the return to life of Futurama. As if Futurama had never been cancelled by idiots, then brought back by bigger idiots. One, two. Professor, my hair's all frizzy. Okay. Well, that's all. Oh, also, I'm covered with severe burns. So? What of it? Well, why is those things? <gasps> you mean you don't remember? Nope, nothing. It's like when I passed out in college, except no one drew magic marker penises on my forehead. Well, I suppose it's for the best, considering the unbearable horrors you've endured. Let's never speak of it again. It all began a few days ago. 
We were interstellar fugitives on the run from the law. Fire all weapons and open a hailing frequency for my victory, Yogi. <laughs> And so, as you and Leela kissed goodbye in a tender display of tonguesmanship, we plunged into a massive wormhole, never to be seen again. Yeah, we're back. Sweet coincidence of Porto Prince! We're back at Earth! Of course! That was the Panama Wormhole, Earth's central channel for shipping! <laughs> How humorous! Yes, it's sort of a comedy central channel! And we're on it now! I get it! <laughs> that, activate safety spheres. Also, mine has air conditioning. to my trusty safety sphere, I sublimed with only trivial brain damage. And the others? Right here behind this horror shield. Are they dead? Oh, no, no, no. Much worse. Return to life or to death, as the case may be. And uh, by the way, that episode is called Rebirth, and it involves a slightly disturbing and somewhat literal rebirthing process, somewhat after the part you just saw. So be, be prepared. Don't eat a heavy meal right before you watch that episode. <laughs> so now I guess I will take questions, which there may be many at this strange point in the history of Futurama. So anybody who would like to ask a question, step forward. So they're not dead? They're not dead. They look dead to me. Are they dead? Yes, they had skeletons. They had no <laughs> skin. <laughs> this, this is the year, I want to remind you, that we're in the 31st century here. There's certain technologies available that we do not have in our day. So being a skeleton is not necessarily a permanent condition in the future. I suspect you may get to see some of the, your favorite characters again. Don't panic. The professor's really cheap. <laughs> he only paid for him one shield for himself and gave everyone else for their head. It's, a, it's an expensive proposition. You've got to cut back on a few minor things here and there when you're running a stellar delivery company. So. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, if Bender's Walk a right up he has um, a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. <laughs> now that is a question, that's the kind of thing that we will talk about for about three hours in the writer's room. Uh, we, when we decided to do the skeleton, the row of skeletons like that, we had several problems before us. Now you only picked on one of them, Bender, who if you look really carefully, his skeleton is actually gears and wires, so it's not, so, so it makes perfect sense actually. But you didn't notice Dr. Zoidberg also has this weird like mushy thing inside of him. And Kiff Croker, we have previously said in an old episode, does not have bones. He has a system of fluid-filled bladders. So he, him, we see these little balloon-like things there. So yes, the, the method for bringing them back to life is going to have to take all those things into account somehow. You're correct. Thank you, and sure. thank you for making such a great show. Oh, thanks a lot.